And when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it. This is Jesus. He wept over it, saying, If thou hast known, known, even thou, at least this day, this thy day, your day, if you had known your day, we have a day. The Lord has a day for us all. The things which belong unto thy peace. That peace we went over there was a big word. Our peace. It's not just, oh, it's just tranquility. Oh, bigger. That word says so much more than that. But now they are, uh-oh, hid. It was yours. It was your day. All this stuff just for you. But now it's hid. Now it's hid. It wasn't at one time, but now it's hid from thy eyes. For the days shall come upon thee that thine enemy shall cast a trench about thee and compass thee round and keep thee in on every side. In other words, I just, my life just seems so constrained. And shall lay thee even with the ground and thy children within thee. And they shall not leave thee one stone upon another. Why did all that happen? Why does my life seem so constrained? Why? Because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. Are you sensitive? Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the revelation that's going to come forth. Thank you that you still speak today and that your children hear your voice. We give you glory, honor, and praise in your house. In Jesus' name, and all of God's children said, Amen. You may be seated. Look at your neighbor and say, Help Pastor out today. Okay, we're going to throw Mark 2 up on the screen. I'm just going to jump right in to it today so we can make some ground. <clears throat> this is the scripture we used last week. I don't think I'm going to get to it this week. I will make reference to it. But in Luke, the same account is given. But we're going to bring out different uh, revelations from that scripture next week. So let's get into this one this week. Verse 1, and again he, Jesus, entered into Capernaum after some days. And it was noise that he was in the house. That's just a way of saying the news spread quickly that he was back home. Because he had a home. He had a house. We went over that last uh, two weeks ago. Verse 2, and straightway many were gathered together insomuch that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. And he preached, what did he preach to them? He didn't preach out of the book of first opinion. He didn't preach politics. So Jesus preached what? He preached the word unto them. Verse 3. And they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press... There was obstacles. But obstacles are opportunities in the eyes of the achiever. Amen. Some people wake up and they're like, all right, this is a challenge. I get to overcome adversity. This is not a problem. This is an opportunity. Those go on to be achievers. Those that, ah, it's too high, it's too wide, it's too deep, too long, too much. They never receive. Yeah. But they could not come nigh to him for the press. They uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broke it up, <clears throat> it's a four-letter word, and it's a good four-letter word. It's called work. <laughs> not only did they see a problem as an opportunity, but they didn't mind rolling up their sleeves and actually putting their hands to something. And said it just like, Well, I guess if God wants to do it, he'll have pastor to do it. Just waiting for somebody else to do something. Well, if you see it and it pricks your heart, that's God telling you he wants you to be on board. And to actually be on board, not be a spectator watching the people drive on the train. Get your ticket, get on, and let's go. Amen? Amen. Amen. I am preaching better than you're listening this morning already. So they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. If you refuse to be sensitive, 
you'll not perceive the Lord coming your way. Scripture says that we even entertain angels unaware. I wonder how many times we've un entertained angels in our life and we didn't even know it. And as Jacob said, he woke up and he said, the Lord was here and I didn't even know. The news spread quickly that Jesus was back home. Not everybody heard the news, but, but many did. So let's talk about that for a second. See, not everybody heard the news, but many did. Could it be that you may miss a visitation in your future? Because those whom you run with don't know of? Nor would they circulate kingdom-sensitive news? There's plenty of things I conversation about, and I'm like, well, that sounds interesting. Well, yeah, that happened a few weeks ago already. Oh, really? I didn't even know. Could it be that you may miss your day of visitation because you gave your ear to someone, listen, who's personal, inaccurate, biased, false feelings. Feelings are fickle. They change like the weather. On someone, listen, on someone influenced that person, the one that was that had the personal, inaccurate, biased, false feelings influenced listen, on your decision to not receive what the Lord wanted you to receive from them. Let me say that again. Could it be that you may miss your day of visitation because you gave your ear to someone whose personal, inaccurate, biased, false feelings on someone They be talking about them, and you be listening. And that was a person that the Lord had brought into your life to receive something from them, but now you think they tainted. it. Amen. I got one amen and a few head nods. It's better than nothing. I'll take it. Well, what if all four of these guys, what if all four of them said, oh, oh, well, he's a phony, that guy. You, 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 listen, you don't want to get involved with that preacher they call Jesus. No. You see, none of the Pharisees, none of the Sadducees, none of the scribes, none of the doctors of the law, and brother, not even the chief rulers, Nobody who is anybody has given him their seal of approval. He doesn't even have a PhD. Listen, that guy, he's highly unqualified. Anybody who's anything in the field of biblical studies, they listen, they're saying he's a fraud. And to stay away from his nonsense. Jesus. Yeah, what happens if you listen to somebody's personal, inaccurate, biased, and false feelings on someone? If that was this paralytic's counsel, and, and, and he swallowed it, hook, line, and sinker, we would have has, he, listen, he would have stayed a paralytic. He would have missed the time of his visitation. Your close circle of influence could be a hindrance from you receiving life-changing news of a visitation. People will try to talk you out of something the Lord's trying to get you to go into. Stay away. And the Lord's like, you need to go. Biased. Don't even have the, I'm about to get ahead of myself. Don't even have inside intel on the situation. 
They just going with the flow with somebody else that just decided to throw something out there. They don't know the inside scoop. Even one with palsy, that means paralysis. Listen, even one with palsy can get a visitation if he's connected to the right folk. I want to know when I hear this morning that you may be paralyzed in some area of your life due to fear. Because that's what fear will do. It will paralyze you. Yeah. It keeps you stiff. And you don't want to move to the left or the right. You don't want to back up. You don't want to ease up. You don't want to let it. You don't want to do nothing. You stay frozen. And fear will make you paralyzed. And so if you're feeling paralyzed in any of your parts of your life right now, I got a word for you this morning, and that's it. If you're connected to the right people, you can get to a visitation. There's so much inside of so many people. It amazes me seeing somebody who could take a pencil and just create a piece of art, and they all they do is doodle around the house. I can't do that. You got a gift. How come you're not using it? Fear paralyzed. You ain't moving. I don't have a. I don't have a gift for. Um, what's the, what do they call that? Somebody who decorates room, a, a, an interior designer. I've seen some people that could just take, you know, if they have a little bit of a budget, they can go out and they can all, they can, listen, they can transform a room to where it's like, wow. Well, how come you ain't using that? You're in fear. You're paralyzed. You see things that other people don't. You can do things that other people don't. And it's a gift and it's a skill that God has given you, but you're not using it because you're paralyzed. You're afraid. Because as we saw, first of all, you've got to see that your gift is an opportunity. You don't have to see, well, I don't have this. I don't have that. I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to do it. You're talking about the problem instead of talking about the opportunity. And if you can roll up your sleeves and get to work, and then you can hang around the right folk who will tell you what you can do instead of what you can't do. You know, there's people in your lives that love you so much they could care less about an interior design, anything. But they see so much in you, they liable to say, hey, let's, let's go for the weekend. Let's go up here. Well, what are we going up here to do for the weekend? Uh, don't worry about it. It's all expense paid. I, I, I've got you. Take you to a seminar where there's some guru in the industry just sharing tips and stuff, trying to get you into the world that God created you to be in. But not if you don't hang around the right folk. Somebody who sees that all in you and want to try to get you to your day of visitation because you're paralyzed. You're not moving. You're not going in that direction. And they're trying to get and kick you around, shake you, drag you if they have to. And that's a good thing. Because you don't want to be on the other side because you might have some friends like, well, you may have used to have some friends like this after today. Girl, you know you can't do that. You ain't got no college education. You know where you came from. You know you ain't going to get no help in that. Are you kidding me? You can barely make, you can barely put food on the table. You really going to risk trying to put food on the table for your family to go with some wild fantasy dream or something like that? If you don't pursue your dreams, you'll go work for somebody and help pursue theirs for them. So you can either work for what God has given you or you can work for what God has given somebody else and help fulfill theirs. Hallelujah. That was a nice little trip right there. You may be paralyzed in some area of your life due to fear, but if you're connected to the right folk, you can get to a visitation. Amen. You don't walk around to various places and hear various things when you're paralyzed. You're not a busy bee. So your only source of information comes through your inner circle. 
What information is your inner circle providing you? Are you sensitive? I know some folk, you hang around them long enough, listen, you're doing okay until you get hanging around them and all of a sudden you hang around them and they make it sound like the apocalypse is getting ready to happen tomorrow. <laughs> well, you were doing good until you listened to all this stuff and they try to connect the dots and, and this is going on in the world and that's going on in the world. We're not going to bury our head in the sand. We got... Prof <laughs> he, told us the he told us the season. We got the book. But man, you just hang around these folk and all of a sudden it's like you think doom and gloom and scared and just, just hold on. Just hold on. And the whole time the Lord's saying, let go, let go. That's what he told them when, the, when they become captive. Jeremiah said when they went, when they went over there to Babylon, Jeremiah said, look, get involved where you're at. Because if you get involved, don't just sit there and hunker down and wait for 70 years. Go ahead and listen. He said, when you get involved and put your hand to it, it will bless this community. And if it's blessed, you'll be blessed. Amen. Doom and gloom. Depending on who you're hanging around. Let's go a little deeper. Amen. Amen. How many preachers, how many teachers, how many pastors, how many reverends, how many apostles and prophets, how many, how many evangelists, how many ministers, how many scholars and theologians, how many doctors and how many authors have your attention on a regular basis? That was not an amen moment, so that was good. Getting you to think. It's a long list, wasn't it? Just trying to make a point. Who has your ear has your head. And when, not if, it's not an if, when you have a situation pop up in life, you need a rhema Christos word. So you can operate in faith and stand with patience, confident of a victory. But how can you stand in faith when you're presented with five different interpretations from seven different experts of biblical study? Listen, concerning the passage that will greatly affect how you move forward in that area of your life. Hallelujah, I'm just believing and I'm going to stand on blah, 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 blah. And then you have somebody like, uh, that's taken out of context. Oh, really? Well, what does it really mean? Well, it means this. And then somebody else, no, 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 no. I wrote a book on it. Now, this is what the really is saying over here. Oh, okay. Well, maybe I shouldn't. And then you open your study Bible and Dr. So-and-so says, well, they all kind of got it right, but this is really what's, Oh, I'm coming at you a little bit today. If you're looking for the most articulated, convincing, and informative, and elaborated answer, but it's not a rhema Christos, you're in trouble. If you're not spirit-led, you will be. Look at your neighbor and said, it's going to happen. You, if you're not spirit-led, you will be misled. 
Ask Holy Spirit. Yeah. Ask, Holy, ask Holy Spirit, what well do you want me to draw from? There was a time in my life I was more, I thought I was learning more than I ever did until I really needed to operate in faith and then I was a little more confused than I'd ever been. Because all I would do was watch Christian TV almost all day and night and it was like a plethora of all kinds of stuff from all kinds of places. And I thought, well, I'm building strong in faith until I needed to be in faith and then I didn't know what to stand on. Correct. Ask Holy Spirit what wells. I, I, I shorten my list down. Not that I can't hear a little bit here and there. God can use anybody in anything. Amen? I can get, I've, I've had it happen before. I've had a five-year-old come and just out of the blue just say something to me that was exactly what I'd been praying about all week long. And I had to recognize by the Spirit of God, I just had a visitation. That little five-year-old had no clue why in the world she was saying that. But God had, the Holy Spirit, you, it's exactly what I needed to hear. So ask Holy Spirit what well you're to draw from. Ask Holy Spirit who he has assigned to feed you. When I was sitting down, he gave me a phrase. Listen, you might want to write this down. Many interpretations will produce much wavering. Many interpretations will produce much wavering. I don't know. I don't know which one to go with. Preacher said this, teacher said that, pastor said this, the reverend said that, apostle said this, prophetess said this, the evangelist said this, that minister down there said that, the scholars agree with this, the theologians say that, and the doctors say this, and that author of that book has something to say about it. Many interpretations will produce much wavering. And the one who wavers shall not receive anything from the Lord. For those taking notes, James 1, 6 through 8. Go ahead and put it on the screen. Let me read it real quick. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavers, okay. Amen. I'll go back to the book. James 1, 6. Say amen if it comes back up. James 1, 6 through 8. It says, but, he, but let him ask in faith nothing wavering, for he that wavers is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man, which man? The man that's wavering. Let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all, all. Not just in one area, all his ways. All means all. So you think you can be in faith. You're not in faith yet. You're wavering. You haven't made up your mind yet. You haven't come been fully persuaded. You will, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let me read it again. But let him ask in faith nothing wavering, for he that wavers is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. Who's like, who, who, who's like the driven and tossed? The wavering person. Next verse. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Oh, somebody's not getting something from the Lord. Who is it? Who is it? The wavering one. Who's the wavering one? Well, preacher said this, pastor said that, reverend said that, the evangelist said that, this book said that, this theologian said that, my study Bible says this. Oh, I find it out church folk don't like it real these days. But I want you to walk out of here with something and it start working for you. You will be double-minded and unstable in all your ways. Again, who has your ear? They have your head. Did you know that the majority of commentary... 
in an expensive study Bible. Some of y'all might have it. One of yourself. I'm not talking about a $20 job. I'm talking about you get it and there's all kinds of commentary. You've got, you got a place that uh, cross-references and, and big dictionaries and all that. I mean, you spend some money on, on, on a nice study Bible. I hope that you have one. But did you know that the majority of commentary in an expensive study Bible is written by those who have not received and do not support our biblical stance on the baptism of the Holy Ghost? And along, listen, along with other sound biblical interpretations. Selah is a new wrinkle in the brain of some folk. Because the more I got with Holy Spirit, the more some of the commentaries were just like, no, that's a little different. Well, they said that's not for today, but I just saw Brother So-and-so operating that just wonderfully, and God was glorified. Yeah, not all of them have the same stance that we do. There are some spirit-filled study Bibles out there, but not many. And because of their doctrinal views, listen, formed, their doctrinal views were formed by the biblical academic institutions that they received their degrees from. And because of their denomination's strong stance in certain areas. Because of those two things, most would not dare come against their alma mater. They would not come against their denomination. Listen, even if they were given correct, even if they were given correction during a personal Bible study from Jesus himself. And I'm going to give you some scripture on that too. We got it, 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 it's, it has happened, it is happening. Absolutely will not take the whole account of scripture into effect and, and, and undoubtedly come to the conclusion that this is, what the, this is what the word is saying. One of my spiritual fathers, Brother Keith Moore, and if you're there on uh, Wednesday nights, he's the one that helps us with faith school. He knew a, he was personal friends with a, these theologians that hold uh, stances that we do in the camps that we run in and he had a sad story he said that there was a new translation I'm not going to say which or whatever that's, that's going to be kind of calling things out and I'm not going to do that and you'll see why here in a minute they said he went to that and they had people from this camp and that camp and, 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 and this place and that place and it just had a whole collection of people so we're like we're going to get this one right because we got everybody's input on this. And they were doing up great until they got to Isaiah 53. And instead of calling, the, calling it out sickness, they want to call it griefs. And all of a sudden, some other people from, from our camp said, now wait a minute now, you, you, that's the same word you just translated sickness X amount of times. How come you ain't going to put it here? Oh, we can't do that because then y'all... Everybody will think like y'all do that he actually, you know, we, we, get, we can get healed of sicknesses and that's what he did. He's like, well, that's what that's saying. Why would, you why would you translate it any different when the original writing has the exact same word that you put sickness in and all this time and now all of a sudden you want to change it around a little bit because of what I just told you. Because of their doctrinal stance of where they got their degree from and from their denomination. I don't know about y'all, but I love truth. I love it when I see something where I was like, okay, well, I got that a little, uh, a little off in that area. Praise God, I'm all back on now. Because it all makes sense down the road on other things. It's the ripple effect. <laughs> Amen. You can listen, but let me balance this out a little bit. You can learn a lot of historical information in these study Bibles. And yes, listen, there are a lot of other great nuggets you can glean from in the commentary. You can. And these, and these nuggets they'll, in, your, in your study Bible, they will help you start 
connecting a lot of dots. Okay, so nobody's saying take your study Bible and just poof, but you can eat the meat and throw away the bones. You see, these scholars have been given years, they have given years of their life studying the Word. So it's not like it's like, well, I just, you know, I can't, you know, what, do I, what are you trying to say, Pastor? Do I, do I read them? Do I not read them? Read them. But let the Spirit bear witness that, listen, when you read commentary, you're not reading, <laughs> you're not reading the canon of Scripture. You're not reading God's word. You're reading man's interpretation of God's word. You know who can interpret God's word? God. God. <laughs> but never swallow what any man feeds you, including me, until you've heard from Holy Spirit. He's the author. The smartest and most versed theologians in the whole world at the time of Christ would not concede to prophetic and biblical revelation of Jesus because of the same thing, because of their alma mater and because of what denomination they were associated with. They would dare not rock the boat. And thus they missed the day of their visitation. Throw John 12, 42 and 43 on the screen. When it gets up there, say amen. amen. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers, the big shots, the big boys, the experts in the field, among the chief rulers also many believed on him, but because of the Pharisees, because of, that, because of that denomination. Because what am I going to do now? I got a degree from this place. If I come out against this, they might take my degree away. And this is my identity. I studied long and hard, and I'm Dr. So-and-so. And it came to pass on a certain day as he was, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers, also many believed on him, but because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him. Lest they should be put out of the synagogue. We're going to give you the left foot of fellowship, brother. Get out of here. That nonsense. But I got 20 scriptures on it. How many you got? We don't need any of it on it. We're going to kick you out. It's not what we believe. But if we're under something to be scripture, you got to have scripture. Get out of here. For they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. One of the most humblest times of my life was when the, after the Lord had called me and I was in the ministry for a few years and I got ordained and we were the senior pastors of a, uh, of a church over in Baldwin County. And the Lord took me out of that. I mean, we heard him clear that we were to leave that place. And what I did is I had to go enter into, uh, uh, have a secular job. And that's, that's how I supported my family. And many years went by. And even though I was at another church where I taught Bible, I taught Sunday school, I did a lot of outreaches locally which is why we do a lot of outreaches now because that's where I invested a lot of time in, even though I went on missions trips. Listen, it was quite weird going from Reverend Atwood to Bobby. And that was what's going on. They, they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. I want to I wanna hold on to my title. I, I like it. Can you call me Reverend again? Yeah, that sounded good. That sounded good. Yeah, I like that. I don't want to go back to just being identified as just Bobby, the guitar teacher. I want that position. And I even knew men of God that I was sad, sad enough to say that they, they were let go of one church 
and they refused to go back out and work a job to support their family where they would lose their title. They went to other churches that their own admission of what I've heard come out of their own mouth goes contrary to that denomination that they were going into, but they got to still have a title. They got to still work in the church. And they got a check. They loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. Their identity was wrapped up in a title. And it messed with me for a while. But that's why I'm free of it now. That's why sometimes that pastor seems like he cold hearted on something. Look, I've already been there and done now. You ain't going to hurt me. Amen. Hallelujah. I know who I am and whose I am and who I'm called to do. I don't need your approval. I can't lead you if I ain't free from you. Hallelujah. Let's look at Luke 5, 17. We're going to look at it in detail next week. And I'm going to hit a different part of it, but just for right now. And it came to pass on a certain day. This is the same instance that we're, that we're, that, that we're going over in Mark right now. This is the same instance of a paralytic coming to Jesus and, the, and his friends tearing up the roof and lowering him. It's the same story, but Luke's telling it. And Luke gives, sheds light on this. The same story says, And it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching that there were the Pharisees and the doctors of the law sitting by. They were not there to hear what he had to say like, Maybe I'll learn something. They're there to catch him in something. We don't believe a word coming out of his mouth. Who in the world he think he is? Which will come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem. Let's read the next part together. Ready, read. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. I wonder how many rooms we've may have been in and we had a bias on somebody because we let somebody else have our ear or we read something of man and it, we just didn't think it kind of, it just, just, something's funny about it. And the only thing is funny is because of all the different th people that's had your ear about the whole situation and the power of the Lord was present to heal you. Yeah. Jesus. Amen. It'd be like Naaman. I, why in the world I got to go dip down in that muddy river seven times? We got a beautiful river up here. I mean, what's, what's the problem? Don't have to make sense. Amen. Are you still with me? Yeah. I ain't going too deep, Emma. You may wonder why the Lord sent you to Noah's church. Listen, with a very, very unimpressive congregation of eight. Very underwhelming place. But when the rain starts to fall, you'll be glad you hooked up with the one who got it right. On another note, there are a myriad of people now on social media, self-proclaimed experts who are passionate about calling out the Lord's anointed at a drop of a hat without any reservation at all. I'm going to try not to get my personal feelings in this because they do it to my pastor too. I know him. They don't. They don't know what they're talking about. They're trending and they're multiplying followers. But it's off, listen, it's off of critiquing and being critical. I mean, let's face it, you watch a race to see a crash and you watch a fight to see somebody get knocked out. What was it, uh, you know, we had a secular song in here this morning uh, uh, making, making a, 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 a connecting the dots on something. I got one for you too. The bubble bl the bubble, the, the bubble headed bleach blonde come on at five, yeah. tell you about the plane crash with a glean in her eye. Yeah. Just can't wait to hear about all that bad news. And that's just how humans are separate from the Holy Spirit. We just want to hear all the latest gossip. We want to hear the latest. Critiquing and, 
and being critical on somebody. And there's a sign of you, there's a, listen, there's a side of you. The Holy Spirit says, don't watch that, but there's a side of you. It's like, well, I mean, you know, I don't want to get fooled. Maybe there is something about them I need to know. Then you start trying to ration, you know, rationalize it. Like, I don't want to be duped by nobody. But yet the Spirit of God in you is like, don't. Listen, because some things you can't unsee and some things you can't unhear. Amen. Yeah. And the man from Galilee could be coming down, but everybody is against him. And all the experts are saying, don't listen to that, don't listen to that joker. And you listen to him and you miss your day of visitation. A ministry whose mission is calling out other ministries is not a ministry at all. It's not a God, but the enemy. God hates it. Proverbs 6, 16 through 19. Go ahead and throw that on the screen. I worked hard on this all week long. I'm going to get all this out today. These six things doth the Lord hate. Yea, seven things are an abomination to him. He hates these things. Let's go ahead and roll it. Roll it. A proud look, a lying tongue, a hands that shed innocent blood. Next. And a heart that deceives wicked imaginations, feet that be swift and running into mischief. Oh, 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 and this, and this. Listen. A false witness that speak lies, and he that sows discord among. He hates it. And some people think they got some kind of Holy Ghost badge on like they're doing a righteous cause. You realize that when they said crucify him, they thought they were doing a righteous thing too? Paul persecuting Christians, killing Christians, thought he was right in the will of God. I'm in the pocket, baby. We are a society drawn to drama. Cynical sales. But that's not biblical. That's not kingdom. And there may be 15 minutes of fame from that person from being in the spotlight due to talking about people that you don't know, you don't know them, and about topics concerning them that you have no actual or factual details about. They don't have a clue. But there's absolutely zero honor in this at all. Y'all, leave Joel Osteen alone. Yeah, hey, all that money he got bringing in and taking it from the church, and we see how much. He doesn't take a penny from the church. Well, then, how come he's all loaded and got all that money? Because he writes books that people like to read. He's a New York Times selling best author multiple times. That's where his income comes from. We partners with Joyce Myers Ministries. And I remember years back, everybody was ranting and raving. She had a good year. She brought in $90 million. And everybody just started getting huffy about $90 million. Why does somebody need $90 million? Ain't no ministry need $90 million. And she's this and she that. And la, 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 and women preachers. And here we get a business report to, from her that tells exactly where all the money went. Did you know that of the $90 million, 90% went right back out the door? Well, you don't hear nobody talking about that, though, do you? Right back out the door into the communities, into other ministries, people that are doing good in the world. And then trying to take the rest to, to, to pay for staff and, you know, and, and needs and bills and all that kind of stuff. So y'all just need to shut up. You don't know what you're talking about. I'm tired of messing with my pastor because he's looking fly. Yeah, he dresses a little more modern and stuff like that, but his message is so deep and it's so kingdom. So what if he has some kind of $200 slippers on? Big deal. You don't know him. I do. You don't know his heart. I do. And if you perceive him that way, you won't be able to receive from him in that way. And if you're sitting here in this church, you're like, I have been fed well over the few years. That's the well I draw from. And if you can perceive differently, you'll be able to receive differently. 
and get into your life things that, that, that God wants to tell you. There was a time a few years ago when, when, when COVID hit and we want to take a youth group to summer camp. And I was like, well, God, I don't know how well we're going to do that. My pastor sent a stimulus package. Didn't ask him. Didn't, get, don't, didn't do the pity, poor mouth game. Oh, we want to take youth, pastor, but just pray for us. Just pray for us. We'll be able to get them there. Finances are awful low coming to COVID, pastor. Pray for us, pastor. Never sent anything to him in the natural but in the spirit, he picked up on some stuff, and he sent us a nice size check that got every single one of our kids to youth camp. Amen. Other ministries they pick on. We, we support another ministry. And, you know, he's an easy target because he's very charismatic. Bless his heart, he is. He's just very kind of out there, very charismatic. But when the rain happened in 2008, that historic 100-year uh, rain, And my own local church didn't call to check on me to see if I was okay. But I got a call from Texas yeah. where his headquarters are. Yeah. And they said, are you okay? Well, I'm okay. I got a little bit of, you know, my back bedroom. It didn't soak. It was just a little, we'll be okay. Thank you for checking. Two days later, he sent people all the way from Fort Worth, Texas to my house and one other place in Pensacola to personally make sure that we're okay. And before they left, because we had to do some work in our backyard so the, the, it wouldn't, the water wouldn't, you know, we had to create a swell and stuff so the water could flow out instead of damming up. And before they left, not only did they drive all the way to Fort, from Fort Worth to pray for us and to see how we're doing, they put a few thousand dollars in my hand Jesus. to make sure that the work got done. Yes. So you can call him names and think he's funny all you want to about how he's got a private jet and this and that and the other. That's okay. You don't know him like I do. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, man. I see, I can get personal on this stuff. Stand to your feet. Hey, man. Where's your music place? Next week, we're going to talk more in detail into this and in, 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 in a few areas. And where's the fear of the Lord at? We're going to talk about that. David had the fear of the Lord when it comes to Saul. We're going, to, we're going to start right off the bat on that next week. If there was any reason to say that Saul was a, a no good leader and he was the one to point fingers. He was the one to wag your finger at. The Spirit of the Lord departed from him. Matter of fact, there was even demonic spirits sent to trouble him. But David dare not do anything. Matter of fact, he tried it one time and his heart got so convicted. We'll talk about it next week. Where's the fear of the Lord at? Why are we not sensitive to the things of God? Are you sensitive? Whew. Why is it that we'll have myriads of opinions from man, but yet we won't get still and listen to what the Spirit of God has to say about it? And we let people who we should not give our ear to because they have our head given out biased and inaccurate information they don't know what they're talking about and even demonizing somebody that's a false prophet that might be the one ministry that you get your freedom from Amen. who's your inner circle are they taking you to a visitation or keeping you from a visitation Do they see the treasure in the field and want to try to bring it out of you? Or all they see around them is just, well, that's just life. That's just how it is. And they get sucked up into the drama and the cynicalness of life, the sarcasms of this world, the doom and gloom. And they try to drive. And, and, and the whole time the Lord has got something inside of you that he's so wanting the world to see. 
it's a gift that glorifies him and it's also a gift that helps you out. Because you may be paralyzed in some area of your life due to fear, but if you're connected with the right people, you can get a visitation. You can get to your day of visitation. But be careful who you give your ear to. Be careful on swallowing anything that the Holy Spirit didn't say. That's me. I said that. Amen. Are you sensitive?